one tool in the armoury of central banks when implementing monetary policy is nominal GDP targeting. IEA TV quizzed Dr Scott Sumner from Bentley University about what this involves. Nominal GDP targeting is where the central bank sets an explicit target path for nominal GDP, sometimes called nominal income. It could be 5% growth per year, and that represents the total current dollar or British pound spending in the economy, but it also represents the current income in the economy. So the idea is to have that grow at roughly, say, 5% per year over time, and adjust monetary policy to keep that nominal spending growth on target. What monetary policy tools does the central banks have when the interest rates are almost zero? When interest rates have been reduced close to zero, there's several possibilities. One is that the central bank could engage in quantitative easing or injecting new money into the economy. There's also the possibility to use expectations management. And this would be where the central bank sets uh, or makes a promise to deliver a certain future policy when interest rates have normalized. So even though at zero they have trouble operating, at some point in the future interest rates will rise above zero. Central bank will again have control over spending and if they promise at that point to raise spending to a certain level, just that promise will affect current spending because it'll make people more optimistic about future growth in the economy. What are the advantages of nominal GDP targeting over inflation targeting? The advantage of nominal GDP targeting over inflation targeting is that nominal GDP is a better indicator of what you're really trying to stabilize, which is what economists call aggregate demand. And inflation can reflect either supply side factors or demand side factors. You actually, those have very different implications for the economy. So if inflation is rising due to supply side factors, weak technology growth or high oil prices, the central bank really shouldn't be tightening monetary policy for that. They should tighten policy if inflation were rising for demand side reasons. And what uh, nominal GDP targeting does is it essentially has the central bank focus on the thing that really matters for, say, employment stability or smoothing out the business cycle. And nominal GDP is a variable that is better correlated with stability in the labor market or smoothing out the business cycle and also smoothing out the credit cycles. We've learned that inflation targeting does not prevent these huge boom and busts in um, the credit markets. I can't say nominal GDP would entirely prevent them either, but I think it would moderate the cycle relative to inflation targeting. If nominal GDP targeting had been used in the run-up to the financial crisis, would the boom have been moderated? If the central bank is targeting inflation, there's a problem when you have either rapid productivity growth or reduction in goods prices due to cheaper imports from Asia, for instance. Either of those factors will sort of artificially hold down inflation and then the central bank is, by targeting inflation, they're adopting more expansionary monetary policy. That causes real growth to rise and the economy can overheat. Now if you're targeting nominal GDP, which is basically the growth rate of inflation plus real growth, during that kind of boom period you'd have a more contractionary policy than under inflation targeting because you'd be taking into account not just inflation, but also the real growth in the economy, which can become excessive during these booms like the recent cycle before the recession, also arguably the late 1990s in the US during the technology boom. Since 2008, the UK has had a slowdown of productivity. What would then be the benefits of nominal GDP targeting? If there's a slowdown in uh, technological progress or productivity growth or the economy is weakened by bad regulations from the government, one of the things that will happen is if you do nominal GDP targeting, inflation will be somewhat higher than average during those periods. Now that might sound undesirable, but it's actually better than the alternative because during a period of slowdown in productivity growth, if you target inflation, what you're essentially going to do is uh, create a situation where you have a lot of unemployment from the adverse supply side factors. And so you're going to take an existing problem and make it worse by reducing employment, reducing the size of the national output. 
it's better to sort of uh, finesse the problem by targeting nominal income and you take the hit through slightly lower living standards. So you keep nominal income growing at a stable rate, and workers remain employed, their wages go up at a relatively stable rate along with nominal income, but because the cost of living is rising above normal, their real consumption will have to fall. So the way the uh, economy suffers in that situation is not through mass unemployment, but just through slightly lower living standards of people already working. And then other times inflation will be below average with nominal GDP targeting. So it'll balance out in the long run. Now, if there's a relatively permanent change in the rate of productivity growth or real GDP growth in the long run, the nominal GDP target could be adjusted occasionally to reflect the fact that productivity growth is slower or higher than it's been in the past, and that would help you to keep inflation relatively stable in the long run. My personal view is it's not necessary to do that. It's enough to target nominal income at a steady rate, and that gives you a nominal anchor to the economy. But if people are really worried about inflation drifting higher or lower with long-run changes in productivity growth, there is the option of doing every five or 10 years an adjustment to the nominal GDP target growth rate to smooth out the inflation in the very long run. What growth targets would you suggest a central bank to undertake? If the Bank of England were to adopt a nominal GDP growth target, I would recommend a figure around 4 to 5% per year as a trend growth rate. Uh, the advantage of a higher number is twofold. You're more likely to avoid the so-called liquidity trap where interest rates are zero and it's difficult to do monetary policy. Also, it keeps the labor market sort of lubricated because you don't have to do wage cuts in declining industries. You sort of lower real wages through a little bit of inflation. The disadvantage of a higher number is that the higher the rate of growth in nominal GDP, the more tax you're putting on capital because you're taxing, to some extent, inflated gains. And that distorts the tax system and punishes savers and investors to some extent. So you don't want a too high rate of growth in nominal GDP. Um, and I, I would say a 4 to 5 percent compromise would be reasonable for Britain, maybe a little lower for Japan. Uh, maybe 5% for the United States. It depends on various factors.